Make it, sing it, draw it, say it. This is how dog zombies play it. Do your most a furry creature. Draw a picture of my teacher. I like wafers, they're the best. Marcus Mel Drew's not impressed. Granny's custard's very lumpy. Delia is always grumpy. I'm Tom Nitz. My name's Liz Pichon and I write and draw all the Tom Gates books and right now I'm going to read a bit out of uh, um, Tom Gates' Epic Adventure, kind of. The bit I've chosen to read is uh, when they go to Julia's party. So Julia always has really fantastic parties and this time they've gone, they're going on a boating party. So they've got those special, what are they called now? They're like little, you know, pedlo things and Mark, uh, Marcus and Tom have been paired together. Um, never ends well, does it? <laughs> so I'm going to read you a little bit about that. Here we go. Somehow, by standing next to Marcus, I've been paired with him. I don't complain, though, as it's Julia's party after all. Won't be for long. I'll be in charge of making the birds go in the right direction, Marcus tells me. Fine, I say, because I want to get going. The bird boats have pedals and a rudder at the back to steer them with. But when it's time to get our boat, it looks different to everyone else's, more like a worm than a bird. It's exactly the same as all the others. It's just missing a beak, the instructor tells us. We get in and straight away, Marcus makes it wobble a lot. I can see dad waving at me and still eating crisps. OK, boys, off you go, the instructor pushes us out. Marcus is in charge of steering the bird in a straight line, only he doesn't. Make it go forwards, he tells me. It's you. You're not steering it properly, I say. We're going round and round in circles, so I stop pedalling. Why have you stopped, Marcus says. Keep going. We zigzag from one side to another. I'm getting tired of doing all the work. Come on, Marcus, if you help out, we'll go faster, I tell him. Okay, but not for long, I'm steering. I can tell he's only pretending to pedal as his feet aren't really pushing down very much at all. Oh, this is quite tiring, isn't it? He says, yes, it really is. <sighs> we finally start moving in a straight line when Marcus says, that island looks interesting. Let's go there. OK, but don't get too close, I say. For some reason, Marcus suddenly decides that now is a good time to start pedalling. Our bird boat shoots forward and before we can stop or turn in a different direction, we get well and truly stuck. Because, of course, there they are. There is a sign that says shallow water. <laughs> There they are, stuck. Which part of don't get too close did you not understand? I asked Marcus, who says, it wasn't my fault. It was. Lots of the other kids pedal past us and wave. Brilliant. Then Marcus decides that he wants something to eat and he brings out a sandwich from his pocket. Don't eat that now, I tell him. Why not? I'm hungry. It's only a sandwich. We could be here for ages, Marcus moans. I really hope not. His sandwich attracts a lot of birds who start swimming towards us. Shoo, shoo, Marcus says, trying to stop them from pecking his food. They want your sandwich, I tell him. We're completely surrounded by birds now. It's mine, they can't have it. These birds are not getting my food, Marcus says. Just before a bird swoops down and takes it. Hey, that's my sandwich, he shouts as the bird flies away. Not anymore, it's not, I mutter. I remind Marcus that there'll be food at the party and he's not happy at all. Neither is the boating instructor who now has to row out and rescue us. There's always one or two, in your case, who don't read the signs. Didn't you see it said shallow water? Obviously not, Marcus says which actually makes me laugh. <laughs> the same bird flies past Marcus and, he's tries to, and he tries to splash it with water, which lands all over us instead. Marcus, I shout, 
and the lady tells us both, no splashing with the water, you two. It wasn't me, I say. I'm soaked, Marcus says, like it wasn't his fault. As we're being towed back, some kids wave and point while I look straight ahead and pretend it isn't happening. <laughs> there we go. So that's a little bit of um, Julia's party and the fun and games that Tom and Marcus are always getting into. Hope you enjoyed that. And I'm going to be reading a little bit from all the other books as well. So, bye. Welcome to my bridge show. Hello, everybody. My name is Liz Pichon and I write and draw all the Tom Gates books. This one is called Tom Gates, What Monster? Um, I don't know where those monsters came from, but I've kind of like, you know, they, they feature a lot in the books. So I'm going to read to you a little bit where Mr. Fullerman is actually not in this book very much. Um, he's gone off and they've got a supply teacher. There's rumours that a particular sp supply teacher that everyone knows is super strict is coming to the school. They're all hoping it's not going to be her. Sit down, Brad. Morning class 5F. Morning, Mr. Fullerman, we replied slowly. I'm going away on a very important teacher conference for a few days, so you'll have a lovely supply teacher for the rest of the week. I know you're all going to be well behaved and do all your work, won't you? Mm, uh, yes, um, we mumbled in a not very convincing way. Marcus kept nudging me and saying, told you, told you, see, told you, as if I hadn't believed him. Your new teacher is going to love being at Oakfield School. Sir, is that pile of worksheets all for us? Norman asked. Of course it is. But don't panic, they're not all worksheets. Mr Fullerman seemed to be enjoying himself. Then Amy put up her hand. Sir, what's the new teacher called? In my head, I was saying, not Miss Gravel, not Miss Gravel, not Miss Gravel. Mr Fullerman started to say, oh, um, it's uh, Miss, um, Miss, oh uh, no, sorry, it's gone. Brad Galloway called out from the back of the class. Is that her name, sir? which made all the class laugh. Miss Gone, he added, in case we didn't get the joke. Very funny, Brad. I believe your new teacher is coming into school today, so I'll check her name and tell you later. I was just happy he didn't say Miss Gravel. Imagine if we had a teacher called Miss Take, I said to Amy. We spent the next five minutes thinking of other funny names for teachers. Hmm, Miss Understood. Miss Out, <laughs> Miss Heard, Miss Isle, Miss Spent, Miss Rabble, Miserable, <laughs> I have to think of that one, Miss Shapen, Miss Chief, Miss Strict, Marcus added, not quite getting the joke. And don't forget the new school play auditions, Mr Fullerman reminded us all. I'm sure the play is going to be a great success because you're all so talented. Not everyone is, I muttered, because I've watched most of the plays. I'm going to audition for the lead role, Marcus told me, sounding very sure of himself. You don't know what it is yet. It could be a musical. And then you'll have to sing and dance something at the audition, I pointed out. I know, but that doesn't worry me because I'm what you call a triple threat, Marcus said confidently. Amy raised an eyebrow like she was surprised. What's a triple threat? I asked him. It means I can sing, dance and act. See, triple threat. That's me. Sounds more like some kind of an ice cream I, I like. I said, like, I'd like a triple threat, please, with extra sprinkles, I told him, which made Amy laugh. Very funny. I was so good in the last play. I'm sure I'm going to get a bigger role this time. Which part did you have again, Tom? He added. Oh, I can't remember, I said. I did remember. I just didn't want to tell Marcus again. Um, were you a villager in the crowd or a tree? No one wants to be a tree, do they? Being covered in leaves, waving your arms around and swaying, pretending in the wind. Marcus kept going on and on about being a tree, saying it was the worst part in the play to get and how boring it must be when Amy interrupted him. Um, what's wrong with being a tree? 
Tom was a very good tree in the last school play, weren't you, Tom? Amy remembers everything. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. I'd forgotten about that, I sighed. Was your acting a bit wooden? Marcus asked me, laughing at his own joke. Actually, Marcus, everyone thought I was a tremendous tree, I said right back at him, and Marcus just groaned. You two should leave each other alone, Amy joined in. Good one, I said, and we tried to think of more tree jokes. I couldn't think any more. There you are. So you have a little bit of Tom Gates, What Monster? Hope you enjoyed that. Um, at the back of this book, what have I got to see? Let's see. I've got a little cartoon strip about a dog called Bandit. And oh, this is a good page. This took me ages to draw, and I'll let you into a little secret about this. Um, I have drawn a lot of the people who were involved in making the book um, from my publishers. I've also drawn, that was my old editor, Sam, and I've drawn Andrew Biscom, who, where is he? There he is. <laughs> oh no, there he is, with his arms folded. <laughs> um, he's the creative director at Scholastic. Um, I've drawn my agent, Caroline there, and I've drawn my husband, Mark and Zach there, and my two daughters. Um, lots of people, there's Penelope's in there somewhere. Um, and I've also put other people in there as well, like there's Santa Claus, there's um, Frida Kahlo, the artist. <laughs> so you can spend a lot of time like trying to work out, see who else you can spot in this page. Okay, hope you enjoy that. Um, thanks for listening. Bye. Welcome to the Show.